Hi, everyone. I'm Mitch with Swift Solutions. This is my colleague, Matt, on the customer success team. Um, we're really excited to come here and just add some color to this guide that we created and put together to help you all with your initial guide to buying SolidWorks. What do you need to know? What steps do you need to take to understand exactly what product you need to purchase to get started with SolidWorks? So to get started, let's just go over a summary here of what we're going to discuss, um, what people need to be thinking about when they're going through SolidWorks, when they're going through the purchase process. Um, so first, Matt, we'll discuss the primary product use case and needs that our customers, if they're bringing on a new license, needs to think about or a new user needs to be thinking about before they make that purchase. Then we'll go to how do they want to access the product? And then lastly, how do they want to purchase the product? What options they have there? So to get us started, um, what do they want to do with it? We have three tiers. We have standard, we have professional, we have premium. Would you mind adding some color into, I guess, the details they need to be thinking about for each tier? Absolutely. Now, when people, um, if, they're, if they've worked with SolidWorks before, they're, they're familiar with these three tiers to some capacity. So standard is going to give you everything that you need to get general models built, whether it's parts, assemblies, and drawings, all the sheet metal capabilities, weld mints, surfacing, all of that is available regardless if you have standard, professional, and premium. Um, it's when you need to go beyond just the basic model and start looking at some of those more advanced capabilities that you start to fall into the professional and premium packages. When it comes to professional, um, there's, there's a number of different uh, solutions, and we'll scroll down here in, in a minute to the full matrix, but really there's two main ones that we get up in conversation that come up a lot. SolidWorks Visualize gives you photorealistic rendering, so if you're doing marketing material or Im adding images for your website, whatever it may be, if you want that more realistic image of what your product's going to look like, this tool is included with a professional package. And then SolidWorks Toolbox also gives you a pre-built uh, toolbox of, of fasteners, uh, screws, nuts, bolts, uh, washers, and, and beyond that to just general hardware that you can drag and drop into your assemblies. Uh, for machine builders and people that are using a lot of hardware in their assemblies, this could be a huge time saver. They don't have to go through and model their own, their own hardware. Um, and then they don't have to go and find it online and download copies either. So uh, that can be a huge benefit. When it comes to premium, um, one of the main things that we see from the modeling side of things is what's called SolidWorks routing. And that allows people to do routing systems of pipe and tube, electrical routing, duct routing. Um, and essentially, it allows you to take uh, the, the end components or T's, uh, so flanges if you're doing pipe and tube, or T's in the pipe and tube, or connectors for electrical. Uh, essentially take those and, and just draw a 3D line and it fills in whatever the actual, like the wire or the pipe and tube. Um, it allows you to drag and drop components and break those off. If you're doing pipe and tube, you can build spools off of the, the entire assembly and do your spool drawings. So there's, if you're doing full routed systems is where that routing really comes into play. And then um, beyond the design side of things, premium also gives you access to simulation uh, and it's a structural simulation for linear static analysis. So uh, there is simulation options beyond just that, but that does come with the premium package and is bundled right in. Those are the main differentiators. Mm -hmm. uh, we do have a matrix on this guide as well that will give you an entire breakdown on a feature by feature basis. If you're, you're getting into any of these, and um, chances are a quick Google can tell you what the capability can do, uh, but we're more than happy than Google to give you some more mm -hmm. context and show you what the individual capabilities, if you're unfamiliar with it, you'd like to learn, if it could help you, uh, go ahead and, and give Swift a call and, and we can jump on and uh, take a look with you and see if that's the right fit for your organization. Sure, absolutely. And would you say, you know, thinking about that toolbox, I know it comes up a lot in my conversations with people. Um, is that mainly thinking it's a time saver? Is there anything past that that they should be thinking about with toolbox if they're evaluating whether to bring it on or not? It, it can, it's a big time saver if you're talking about having to not go and download models. Um, it's going to help keep standardization too. Um, if, you're, if you're looking at scaling out and making sure that everybody's using the same components, that's a big part of it as well. So if you're looking at maintaining time efficiency, standardization, um, and then you can also customize it as well. So that, that allows you to kind of control that standardization. I only want my team to have access to these components 
um, and, and you can build it out to what you actually have access to in-house and make sure that they're they're building assemblies that are true to what you can actually manufacture. Got it. Okay. When you look at this list, is there anything else we should highlight right now um, before moving on? No, I, I, I mean, all of these provide value to the different different types of organizations, but I would say that those are the main differentiators uh, to, to look out for that we hear in conversations the most. Okay, great. So moving on, you figured out your tier. You figured out you want to go, let's say, professional. You want access to that toolbox. Now you have to figure out what type of licensing. How do you want to access it? We have three, and then I'll ask you to kind of add provide color to each one. So first one, named user licensing. Second one, standalone licensing. And then third, network licensing. Can you provide a kind of high level differences there and then what someone should be thinking about as they select their type of licensing? Named user licensing is going to be a license assigned to a given email account, uh, account created with an email address. So that license is assigned to that account. Uh, if they have SolidWorks installed on computer A and computer B and they jump from computer A to computer B, all they have to do is sign in and it activates that license regardless if they're across the country, across uh, the world. They can jump in, they're traveling, they can still access their work. Now, in terms of standalone licensing, that's going to be a serial number uh, that's assigned to activate it on one given computer at a time. If you need to go from computer A to computer B, you need to go physically to computer A, deactivate that license, and then jump over to computer B and activate that license physically. You can't do it remotely. You need to be at that computer. And then if you were to ever lose that computer or crashes, whatever it may be, you can request an override. So you have less control over just jumping freely uh, between computers. In terms of network licensing, those it's, you can think of that as a pool of licenses that's hosted on your company's server. Um, and then if you have one license, five people could share that license, but only one person at a time. So uh, one person is using it, the other person goes to get it, and there's none available. That person, the person that is using it, closes out, then all of a sudden the other people could then take that license, uh, the first person that grabs it. Um, you, can, you can take things and check it out to a computer when you're using network licenses, but otherwise you do need to be connected to your server's network. Um, so if you're on a different network, you're at home, you'll have to VPN in to the same network as your server to be able to even check that license out. So in terms of named user licensing, really this is the way that a lot of people are starting to go. It provides a lot of flexibility. It provides you the same SOLIDWORKS installation as uh, standalone or network licensing. This is just a matter of licensing. Uh, so all of these have standard professional and premium associated with them. Um, in terms of standalone licensing, um, if you had a situation where you were never going to be connected to internet, um, named user licensing is a standalone, uh, it does use the internet to, to activate your license. You can take it offline, but you will at least need an internet connection to initially activate it. In standalone licensing, you'll need at least um, an internet connection to activate it, but uh, once it's activated, it's, it, you're good. You could be offline for the rest. There is ways to do it without the internet connection as well, but um, if you're dealing with high security, ITAR, uh, certain things that cannot be connected to the internet uh, in any way, standalone licensing is, licensing is going to be another thing and there's use case for network licensing as well. And then the network really just comes in if you have like, uh, there's, there's a ratio, but four or five people per license that are sharing it because it, it is more costly. So it's, it's really comes into play of you have a lot of people sharing one license. Okay. And I run into quite a few people who's got set up with a network license maybe you know years ago and I've just been renewing it. Um, this named user is new and newer, I guess. When should they think about, and you touched on it a little bit, but when should they think about switching over to that named user from the network? Is it only when it's like a one-to-one -one, um, or do they need to do a cost differential? I would, I would say contact us here at Swift for, for, whether that's a good move for you. I mean, there is a lot of factors. There's, there could be certain um, ability to receive discounts if you trade in. That's it's not necessarily a guarantee, but that is a possibility. Um, and, and there is the whole factor of of um, the ratio of how many users and how often they're using it and and how it's really being shared. If they're if you're if you're got one person using a network license just because it was easier to jump from computer A to computer B mm -hmm. at the same in the same building then I would take a look at, at switching that over. Even two people, three people is, I think, where that starts okay. to get a little bit more um, questionable. Okay, great. That makes sense. So moving on, we figured out 
hey, we want professional. We want to go with the named user licensing option. Okay. Or let's say we want professional and we want standalone licensing option. Okay. Now what? How do we want to buy it? Um, we have two options. We have subscription. We also have perpetual. Um, what should people th- be thinking about with the difference here? Yeah. So it, it's really about how your business and, and how you want to purchase the software in terms of today's today's trends. A lot of people like that subscription approach. It's a lower upfront cost. Um, they might not be using it all the time uh, for 10 years straight. Uh, so that gives them the flexibility to have that lower upfront cost, get access to the same software, and then turn it off if they don't need it. Or it also gives them the ability to easily scale um, because they're not putting as much upfront cash into a perpetual license. They have more cash to get three licenses at once for a year rather than only one. Um, if you're talking about a perpetual, if you're buying a license that you want to have for the next 30 years, perpetual will give you that ownership. Um, there is what's called maintenance with a perpetual license. So if you always want to have access to updates, there's a yearly fee uh, that's that's going to be like kind of the, the maintenance to get you access to the latest updates and, and support. Um, in terms of perpetual licenses as of today, uh, that does come bundled with two years so you have that maintenance for two years you can update for the following two years Uh, but then after that it's optional on a year-by-year basis but if you stopped that maintenance then you still have the license it's just at the version year you don't get any updates Mm -hmm. after that with term if you do stop your subscription then you don't have access to that license anymore so there's benefits in terms of how flexible subscription gets uh, gives you how much flexibility it gives you, but in terms of perpetual, if you're just looking to have a license sitting around, um, it's we we focus on that subscription mm-hmm. approach. It's very much future proofing. Uh, it's always giving you access to the latest uh, uh, latest and greatest hard, uh, software, um, and and it's it's big big trend in the industry right now as well. Okay, and just to clarify with perpetual, let's say you do not pay that maintenance fee, you lose access to all the cloud services as well. Correct. Correct. So all of these licenses as of July uh, 2023 now come with what's called cloud services. Uh, that's built in data management capabilities, collaboration capabilities. And if you haven't looked into these yet, it's definitely something that is worth taking a look at. Another thing that you can give us a call here at Swift and we'll jump on a call and show you that. But um, in terms of the, the cloud services, they are tied to the maintenance. So if that maintenance goes away, those cloud services go away as well. Okay. Perfect. So, yeah, I run into a a lot of prospects who are really excited about the subscription and focus on that named user licensing just because of flexibility. You can turn it off. You can turn it on. You can pay for a quarter if you have a summer intern. Um, And that's just not something people have come across too much. Mm -hmm. So obviously I'll put you on the spot here, but what would you say um, to people who just, you know, this is a lot of change. This is a lot of newness and sometimes that can cause hesitation. Mm-hmm. Um, what would you kind of just give say to them? I mean, change is inevitable. Uh, there's 2D CAD and, and moved to 3D CAD, and people were super hesitant. But look where we are now. I mean, there's <clears throat> there's things. This named user didn't come out of nowhere. It's solving problems that people had, and it's answering those problems. People have issues all the time with forgetting to deactivate on one machine and going home and realizing it and then they they're stuck they have to drive back to work to deactivate to work at home these are things that we get calls about very frequently um, in terms of solidworks standalone licensing that this this was a uh, an answer to that call Mm -hmm. and that change is generally going to be driven by something that is is patching a problem of some sort and that and that's providing flexibility that users have never had access to. Great. So putting it all together, if you decide that you found your option or do have more questions, please feel free to reach out to us at Swift Solutions. Happy to talk through your options. Happy to provide you with a quote. Um, Probably can't click here, but click on the link below. Thanks. Thanks.